Welcome this 10th day of September to the show. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope that your Monday has been off to a great start. Even though it's not been good news, we've seen in parts of the country, especially regarding the kidnap of patients and medical personnel in Kaduna State. We'll talk more about that much later. I am Olive M.O.D. And I am Osaogi Ogba. Welcome to Tuesday morning's edition of Breakfast Central. Um, as always, we encourage you to be a part of the conversation. Uh, simply tweet at us at New Central TV. Let's know your thoughts on any of the conversations that we're having and also maybe give us live updates of uh, situations uh, that might be occurring in, at your um, location. Yes, Olive has just mentioned in Kaduna State, I believe, there was an attack by bandits as reported on this Nigerian newspapers. Um, an attack, you know, that led to the kidnapping of patients and uh, healthcare professionals from that hospital in Kaduna State. A really shocking story, you know, but of course, you know, another reminder that we still have not, you know, solved our security challenges across Nigeria. It is still a serious issue that the Nigerian government must continue to do whatever it, it, it can to ensure that we solve. Um, the primary responsibility of government is the security um, and safety of lives and property of, uh, um, of Nigerian citizens. And if we, if we can get that one sorted, then I'm not sure exactly what we're doing. It just makes absolutely no sense, you know, to still have a government in office, both, you know, from the presidency to the governors, the legislative arm of government, of course, in National Assembly and... We continue to have these issues year after year after year um, without any actual end in sight. Olive? Interesting. Like, I mean, not in a good way, of course. It's really, really sad to see these stories. I mean, the reports regarding the insecurity attack in Kaduna State reports that they weren't the actual target. So it was a school that was the actual target. They had gotten to the school at 9 a.m. on Monday and realizing that the school was empty, they then redirected their targets to the uh, primary health care center at Kuyalo Beningwari, local government area yeah. of Kaduna State. The actual number of patients that have been kidnapped or you know, people who were there, we're not even sure about that. So far, we don't have any update regarding that. But the reports we have are that two nurses and you know, some medical personnel and patients were dragged out of the hospital. And it, again, it reinforces the fears that the average Nigerians have. So it, it feels like where really is safe. You stay at your home, or, or you go to ch you go to school. You are kidnapped in school. You go to church with, or mosque. You see them attack the churches and the mosques. And now you go to the healthcare, and you see them attacking the health. Yes, it wasn't primarily intended to be the healthcare uh, providers. But if you remember, we had a guest on the show who is um, I, I'm not quite sure what his designation is now. I can't seem to remember. But when we asked him about why, because we had seen a repeated incident of doctors that had been kidnapped. And he did say that he felt it was targeted. And yes, at the, you know, upon first hearing, you would think, oh, that's just making things up. Until he then says to us how they were having shortage with having a, a medical personnel attend to, take care to of their other victims, other victims mm. as well as the bandits themselves. So as a result, it was in a measure targeted. Yeah. So it's, it's very unsettling to hear stories like this, to hear that our medical personnel or our medical facilities are not quite safe. So where, where can Nigerians really find some measure of safety? Very true. And even in your house, if you decide, you know what, I'm not going to school, I'm not going to church or mosque, I'm not going to the market, I'm not going to, to hospital, I'll stay in my house right in the comfort of your home. The bandits could come yeah. and meet you there. You know, and I, I, in previous conversations, you know, I have always asked, what is the difference in our approach towards these things in the last 10 years? Um, when previous administrations ca came into office, we had security challenges. Um, they made promises that we're going to end these security challenges. I remember President Buhari, you know, was uh, mouthed as the one that will, you know, put, a, you know uh, put it to the bandits and the terrorists back then. Um, he would end security while uh, uh, Professor Yemi Shimbajo will focus on the economy. Um, eight years after, that was all a joke. We still didn't see, you know, that there was much difference in either. In fact, the economy was worse. Security challenges were also worse. Um, it's either, of course, you know, I mean, there's different arguments, you know, as to whether Boko Haram then decided to break into branch and become kidnappers, become bandits, or, I mean, everybody just now created their own, you know, security um, um, insurgent group, you know, and then focused on different, you know, um, um, things. But the point is, it became worse after eight years of our administ administration. We currently have a new government in office that has made similar promises. So again, what is the difference in the approach between 2015 and in 2024? Having new persons occupy these uh, positions as security chiefs is not necessarily, you know, a difference in approach. 
Um, and if we do not see that there's a different style of budgeting, there's a redirecting of the funds, there is a new focus in the way that the funds are directed in, you know, in our, our, our budget for security, there's a completely new mentality concerning tackling these things, then almost nothing will change. And, you know, it's, it's, it's never just buying bigger guns. There's that part. I've always argued that if we do not have a better process of, of, um, of um, protecting our borders, to stop the proliferation of arms, to stop the access to you know these big guns and ammunition that these bandits have or these kidnappers have, we would almost never solve the problem. You know, you can bring all the soldiers that you want in the world, but they would always have access to weapons. And so there is that part. There's also the you know a, a financial aspect of it where you need to continue to track these funds and find out where they are going to. And so, there's also even being able to track their their. I mean, they have mobile phones that they're using. They have all technology of that they're using. All, every single if part of it. If we could see how very speedily they were able to track uh, PDOM, that's uh, Isaac Bristol. Yeah. Beyond PDOM, there was someone else that they tracked recently. The young man who you know, allegedly killed Christiana Ido, he was being tracked with his mobile devices. If they have such technology to actually track people, why are we very not seeing that and so It's to hard terrorists? to convince anybody. That you can't find these people, and I did something last week about the bandits, you know, and I, you know, when, when I was saying that it's such an insult, and it's a slap on the face of all the service chiefs and the, and the, and the Nigerian uh, the presidency that bandits are bold enough to be putting out videos on, on TikTok. TikTok. I mean, doing giveaways on TikTok with you know bundles of cash that they've gotten from their victims. It is a slap on our, our collective faces that they are bold enough to do that, and it really just tells you that they are not afraid. No, none of them is thinking, oh, you know, you're going to track my location. They, they, there is something absolutely wrong that is going on, and that's what has ma made this thing to persist. Right. But it's, it's definitely a conversation that we'll continue to have. We, we have to play our role. Stay with us. Let's quickly share with you what uh, we have for you today, and also then bring you breakfast headlines. Labour Party crisis depends as Abu Ray fires back at Peter Obi and O.C. Abu led executive rejects automatic tickets for OB and OT. And still, uh, these are the conversations happening with the Labour Party. For now, the DSS has released an LC president, Ajero on Bill, who was arrested yesterday. We'll talk about that in detail. Federal government dispels VAT increase in claims and reaffirms 7.5% rate. We bring you the newspaper front pages as well. For now, let's bring you breakfast headlines. Welcome to Breakfast Headlines. The Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, has condemned what it termed the brazen and illegal detention of its president, Comrade Joe Ajero, by the Nigerian authorities without any legal warrant or justification. In a communique issued after an emergency meeting of the National Administrative Council, the NLC described Ajero's detention as an affront to workers' rights and a violation of democratic principles, including the freedom of movement and expression. The NLC demanded Ajero's immediate and unconditional release before midnight yesterday and called for an immediate reversal of the current petrol price hike to 670 naira per litre. And of course, uh, news reaching us, um, as of last night, say that Joe Ajero was uh, set free uh, last night uh, by the, um, the Department of State Services. We'll bring you further updates on that story today. Family members and uh, residents of Southern Burning, the official palace of the slain emir of uh, Gobert, the uh, Issa Mohamed Bawa have called for justice over his murder by bandits. This was as they met with New Central Television's crew who had visited uh, to get more details around the circumstances surrounding his abduction and subsequent killing by bandits. The emir of Gobert was uh, kidnapped and murdered by bandits on his way home uh, to Saban Berni after attending a meeting in Sokoto. My father is a good person in the people. And the people of Samuel Hagaman are proud with him because he loves people. And he loves he love his family. But always he can advise us. We can sit well with everybody. If you handle your people, 
your people, if you let your people, you can care about what, what you in your life. So I can never remember this word in my life. The time is that people I kidnapped, I kidnapped him. He told me, Ibrahim, is it here? Yeah, I want to remember me. I say, I said he no. So why you cannot bring them in the morning? And, we, and leave this place. I told the people, we don't have that money they can demand them with us. He's talking about one billion naira. We tell them, I don't have all, I don't, even my life, I never see one billion. We'll bring you more security related stories in the course of the bulletin, but first let's uh, shift our attention to politics. The embattled national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure, has announced that the party's presidential ticket for the 2027 election is no longer reserved for its former candidate, Peter Obi. Speaking at a press briefing following the party's National Executive uh, Committee meeting in Abuja on Monday, Abure stated that the 2027 presidential ticket is now open to all members of the party. Abure also dismissed the possibility of an automatic second-term ticket for Abia State Governor Alex Oti, emphasizing that the seat will be contested by other aspirants. And now to more security stories. Uh, suspected bandits abducted two nurses and an unknown number of patients from the primary health care center in Kialo Berningwari local government area of Katuna State in an attack on Monday. According to reports, the gunmen, who were in large numbers, initially targeted the nearby Government Day Secondary School around 9 a.m., but redirected their attack to the healthcare facility after finding the school empty. Away from Nigeria, the United States has called for an independent investigation into the death of Tanzanian opposition figure Ali Mohamed Kibao, who was killed over the weekend. His death comes just a month after several senior Shadema members were briefly detained in a mass roundup, sparking fears of renewed political repression in Tanzania. Kibao, a retired military intelligence officer, was reportedly forced off a bus at gunpoint on Friday by suspected security agents while on his way to the northern port, uh, city of Tanga. His body was discovered in Dar es Salaam on Saturday. And that's all on Breakfast Headlines. We'll go back now to Breakfast Central. And of course, I'll bring you our top stories. I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. The embattled national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure, has accused Peter Obi and the party's presidential candidate in the last general election, as well as Alex Oti, the party's sole governorship candidate and governor of Abia State, of betraying the party and sowing seeds of internal division. Abure made this known during a press briefing in Abuja after the party's National Executive Committee meeting in response to allegations by several members of the party that he has mismanaged the party's funds. New Central's Joshua Imari tells us more. Following the recent inauguration of a former Minister of Finance, Nenadi Usman, as the caretaker committee chairman of the Labour Party, this has not gone down well with the party's outed national chairman, Julius Abure. The Abure led National Working Committee met in Abuja and accused the former presidential candidate, Peter Obi, and current Abia State Governor, Alex Oti, of trying to set the party on fire. This meeting held without the authority or consent of the National Executive Council and sought to install a so-called new leadership. Let me be clear. This action was not just illegal, it was a betrayal of everything the Labour Party stands for. A reward for loyalty with ingratitude, a reward for support with insubordination. A visibly upset Abure assured Obi and Oti that henceforth, 
there will be no more automatic ticket for them in subsequent elections, thus throwing the race for their positions open to all contenders. Um, we have not yanked off Ale Soti and Peter Obi. We have simply said that the doors of the party are open to others, which is democratic. If you look at section 221 and section 222 of the 1999 constitution, it makes it clear that every political party is open to all Nigerians. The embattled national chairman of the Labour Party says that popular activist Aisha Yesufu and Itua Igodalo were responsible for managing Obi's campaign funds in the 2023 general election, describing the allegation that he was responsible for Obi's failure in the polls as false. In Abuja for News Central, I am Joshua Imarai. Thank you, Joshua Imarai, for that package that starts off this conversation this morning. The crisis in the Labour Party has worsened as the party's leadership announced that the presidential ticket for the 2027 general election is now open to all qualified Nigerians. This decision was made by the party's former national chairperson, Julius Abure, at the Labour Party's National Executive Committee meeting in Abuja. Abure stated that the party's doors are open to others, implying that Peter Obi and Alex Oti, who were previously adopted as the party's candidate, are no longer guaranteed the ticket. This move is seen as a response to Obi and Oti's involvement in a meeting that led to the emergence of a caretaker committee which replaced Aburi as party chair. Meanwhile, it has been reported that uh, Peter Obi and Alex Oti have written to the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, notifying him of a 29-member caretaker committee uh, to organize uh, party congresses and national convention within 180 days. The letter stated, or dated rather, September 6, 2024, explains the leadership crisis in the party, citing the de-recognition of the Abure-led National Working Committee by INEC in June 2024. Now, joining us uh, to uh, discuss this is the National Publicity Secretary of the Labour Party, Abayomi Arabambi. Good morning, and thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, good morning, and thank you for having me. Good to see you again. Um, we've spoken with you a few times in the last couple of weeks, and it just keeps getting more interesting. So let's, you know, first of all, get your reaction to um, the, of course, you know, declarations by Julius Abure. The, the party's ticket is now open to anybody, you know, no longer solely given to Peter Obi or Alex Oti. But thank you very much. Um, I thank God for what happened yesterday. Yeah, it is not today, you know, We've been saying uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Peter B is not straightforward, you know, with his uh, interaction and dealing, you know, with Labour Party. It is crystal clear now for them, Mr. Peter B and uh, Governor Salesoti, and the Labour Party is back, you know, into the hand of the original owners. Um, Nigerians, you will see yesterday the why some people choose to disrespect the constitution of Nigeria. You will see why some people choose to tread the path, you know, of a two-stable felony. It wasn't because they were paying by the loss of an uh, election by Peter 2023. It was simply because all of them have soiled their hand in this theater of financial mismanagement. Yesterday, the national chairman, please, I want to make a correction, please. Abure is not factional or former national chairman, please. We must learn to respect the constitution of Nigeria. We must learn to respect the constitution of the Labour Party. Mr. Peter B and uh, Governor Lesoti has no constitutional backing, please to preside over the affairs of the Labour Party. If they like, they can write 100 million times to INEC. INEC as a body has done so many things like this, even in Samfara. They supported Governor Yari against uh, Senator Mafara. At the end of the day, APC won on the election. They took it away and gave it to PDP. That was when Matawali became the, the governor. In reverse, there have been issues between Senator Magnus Abe and Ruth Miyamishi. The person who has, you know, 
I mean, I the cashback, I next supported them. At the end of the day, the, no, the court threw out all the APC candidates. And that was why Governor Wiki, you know, wrote to the government house without any opposition. So we are not, we are, we are not bothered. They can be parading whatever they have with INEC. The court, you know, we definitely said to it. Now, back to the issue at hand, the blame they put on Aburi while we lost that election has now... Oh, sorry, you just, know, just before you go on, just before you go on, just to be clear what you're saying, you're saying that they um, are to be blamed for the Labour Party's um, failure to win the River State election? No. No, I said INEC... As a body, we expected them, you know, to be law-abiding. And then so they can choose, you know, to dance. Naked in the market with Governor Alex Oti and Peter Obi. They would definitely suffer the same fate that APC suffered in Savara in 2019, where, you know, they supported illegality with Governor Yari, Abdulaziz Yari Aziz, against Senator Mafara. Or they was out there and they would suffer the same fate between... Senator Magnus Abbey, which all of us knew, and uh, Roti Miyamishi then, you know, in uh, Rivers. So I said, if I make like, let them be promoting this illegal 29th Article Committee, whose chairman is still answering, is still answerable to EFCC since 2015 over mismanagement of Nigeria funds to the tune of 7.9 billion. She's still answerable. She has not cleared herself. And that was the best person that Peter B put forward. But we are not surprised now because even 2023 election, we were won by Charles Ludo that Peter B is a trader. He's only coming to use a party to trade. And that has now, you know, been made known to the public where you have a party you want to run an election under. Okay. And you now went and put a Chinese yep. Sufu as a signatory to a party account and pass on it to a Godello. So you can now see why people refuse this to stand the during the of national anthem. So I said this before, was the best thing. You know, I've been saying this thing that their money will be fair to account for. As far as we are concerned, they need to come and explain how they spend 12 billion naira and 50 million dollars. You know, this is not the first time, and I've challenged them to write petition to the police. These are what we will have confronted you with because Obi will not give us. Yeah, did, 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 uh, did Julius because... Abure always know that funds were allegedly mismanaged by Aisha Yesufu and uh, Itua Udalo and, and, and Peter Obi all this while? Had he always known? Or did he only discover a few days, you know, before yesterday? No, he's fully aware, you know, of their atrocities before. And this explains the reason why you see both uh, Alessotti and Peter Obi, are you getting me, trying to forcefully become his friend. All but right. immediately after the court of a big judgment, that we came together with him, we formed our normal comradeship, and we told him, the chairman, that Nigerians must know what is between us. We must not behave like, you know, uh, Papa the CPK. All right, Mr. We Arambi, to cover their atrocities. I want, I want to ask a follow-up question, you know, to the one that my colleague just asked. If Julius Abre has known all this while, why is he only just speaking up? Is he only speaking up because he's trying to protect his selfish interests now that he has seen that the odds are not, not actually in his favor? No, I think that is immaterial now. I think what we should dip on is the man, St. Peter Obi, the man, St. Alex Governor Oti, the man who has always been condemning every activities of the federal government, siphoning money to, in, to individuals. Mr. Rabambi, Mr. Rabambi, I want to bring you back again, yes. please. I want to bring you back. I, I don't agree that it's not immaterial. I'm not aware, and I'm asking you, maybe you can enlighten me. Has he spoken about this before now? Why is he just speaking about it now? If you knew that there was some financial no, impropriety going did, on within your did, party, did, as the national TV chairman, statement. the responsibility is on you no. to speak up, not when it feels like no. you are now being kicked out, then you are speaking up. No, they cannot even kick him out. One, he has said it on this station that he challenged Peter B or anybody to come and challenge him about the statement of the party account. And that he will expose them to Nigerians. And that was the second day Obi claimed he was going to one school of nursing for donation 
and they now branch, you know, at the party secretariat. Yeah. He said they had I had that video where he challenged them that he knows nothing about mismanagement or uh, the mismanagement of the party of uh, of our party fund, and that he challenged Peter Obi or anybody or anybody or one of your. I mean, well, but that was that, 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 to interview him. that yeah. was a different conversation. That that wasn't him directly accusing these persons or calling of, them out or calling them out of mismanaging billions of naira of party funds. That was a totally different thing. So now that what we're asking is, if he had always known that Aisha Yesufu and Itwai Godal and Peter Obi had mismanaged, you know, party funds running into billions of naira, what took him so long to make you know it public and? Now that he has made it public, will he be um, um, asking that they be properly investigated by um, uh, the EFCC or whoever? A former petition will be submitted to the EFCC. To so the it hasn't been submitted yet? To the Inspector General of Police over this infraction. No, but so, so it has, the former petition has not been submitted yet? No, no, no. You know... It, all of us were investigating this thing because Obi tried as much as possible to cover up this account. He tried as much as you know he's a banker. He tried as much as possible to cover up this account. Governor Lesotho also tried as much as possible. Go and look at their history. All of them are still in this bank. So they tried. They tried as much as possible. That was why when we demanded for the audited account, a man who wants to become president of Nigeria failed, you know, to give us one up to today, he yeah. only read so, out some primary so, so if, if, of account that oh we have a hundred yeah, million, if, we have um, million, that is not an audited account. Please. Great. If, if, if we have been with the truth, hold on, Mr. And that was why. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. If um um Joseph Sabori has known now, I mean from your yourself also, you've also made it clear that Peter Obi, Aisha Yusufu, and you know Ito Egodalo, you know because of their you know, prowess in financial and accounting and whatnot. You know, they would cover up their tracks. But you are very, very sure that they mismanaged billions of naira of Labour Party funds. Why is Peter Obi still being considered to have the presidential ticket? Even if you've said that he's thrown yeah. open. But wh why should he be even part of the options? Why isn't Jules Abure completely saying that he will no longer be on your presidential ticket for any reason? Because, of course, you, you found out that he's guilty of... Mismanaging part no, of what is No, what he said is correct. The door is not shut in a democratic setting. He so a person that mismanaged your party's, party's money? Character. No. No, what I mean is this. You know, B is also an apostle of this postulation. Oh, which court convicted this? And nobody has been convicted uh, until when you are convicted. You presume to be innocent. Are you getting me? So those who feel... You know, when you want to run in a political party, do not forget, you will go through screening. So that somebody will not run to court, you know, to go and collect an injunction, you know, against your selection or this and that, just for them. Because we knew they came to the Labour Party in order to destroy it for PDP in 2020. Just, to, just to follow we up something activity. you said, are you by this, you know, saying that you uphold the presumption of innocence for Peter Obi, that you assume he's innocent until a court of competent jurisdiction proves him guilty? No, we have, of, no, that is the position of the law. And that is what we expect them to follow. Because even when we restrain Aburi, Obi rushed to Azaba to say, oh, Aburi is my man. And that until when, I mean, until when the court, you know, convicted him of, of you know, of the allegation. But when Cobra P set, set, I mean, set the restraining order aside, what did they do? They converted in the Uma here to say, oh, Aburi must go. Then they didn't know that until when somebody is, you know, um, convicted in court, that is when he is guilty. You see, they will approbate and reprobate at okay. every time they want. But right. let me quickly say some things about, you know, what is the most important. I think at this juncture, Obi need to apologize to Nigerians over something. All the agent election money was also frittered away to these two. Individual that's why she is and pastor is why the Gadalo. But you right. remember all through 2020, I mean 2023, all eyes was on the judiciary. OB accusing judiciary of fraudulent declaration of a parliament in Ombu as the president. But let me let me shock you. Our body unit agents 
in Nigeria was supposed to be 1,574,301 party unit agents and 68,057 coalition agents that we were supposed to submit. Do you know that out of all the political party, inclusive of APC, APC submitted 173,223 polling unit agents and 9,581 uh, I mean, uh, coalition uh, agent for the party. PDP did the same, the same number. New Nigeria did the same number. Labour Party did 134,874. That is led by around 40-something thousand polling units. Now, we failed to upload 47,000 polling units. That is, I shall use before, and it's why I got that low. Number two, we also, you know, failed to pay them. And by the time they are now submitting, you know, the results in line with paragraph 456 of the first schedule of the electoral act, we describe quarter of petrol as all the electoral petrol that is that they said you must specify the right of the election, take the holding, and an petrol shall be accompanied by list of witnesses and your results. Now, because they fail to pay agents, and because they also fail to upload over 48,000 agents. We have nothing to submit with that petition. Number three, that is important. The lawyers to Mr. Peter B, they also need to apologize to the judges and to Nigerians because you knew you have failed. Paragraph 456 of the first schedule of the electoral act, you did not go to that petition with your results. You didn't specify the right of the election and you were challenging the judges. That all eyes on the jury. You can see that Peter B. De really came to the Labour Party to fail the presidential election, thinking he can bamboo his way into presidency through some stroke of black magic. I think this is very unfortunate, and this is what I want to tell Nigeria today. Itoi Gadano and Aisha Yusufu decided on their own to free away 1.8 billion naira of agent money, and they are there. He said, when uh, at national time, All right. you know, it's been stung. This is very unfortunate for people that want to govern Nigeria. All right. If it has been won that election, I know by today, Aspen Rock will have been put up for sale for people who could not manage 100 billion, 100 billion naira, a money that can accrue to a local government. People who cannot manage $15 million, come right. $15 million, they took everything by themselves away, and today, look at what we have. Pastor Itwai Gadodo and Aisha Yusufu impersonating the office of national chairman and national secretary. All right, since we're talking about... And being a secretary to since, a Labour Party we're talking about impersonation. It has, I'm coming. It has never been witnessed in APC. It has never been witnessed in PDP. All Even right, during the NCP era, during the DPN era, during the NRC era, it has never been witnessed. This is not the first time we are having the president election. It is totally on comfort, and Peter B must apologize. One to Nigeria, he must right. apologize to the president. Hold on, Mr. Man of name. He must apologize to the judges. For, All right, Mr. Abambi, I know that you're holding brief. Before and after the president. Mr. Abambi, I know that you're holding brief here for Julius Abure, and you've, you know, you're speaking so passionately, passionately about him still being the national chairman. But do you maybe agree that Julius Abure might be of questionable character? And I'm asking this because there are antecedents. If you look at the past year, he's been in, embroiled in one controversy or another. If you go back to about seven months ago, you remember when the national treasurer, Oluchi Okpara, had accused him of forging the signature of the late chairman, Abdul Kader Abdul Salam, and then withdrawing money up to the tune of 21 million naira. And then she was, I think she was suspended for about six months from 13th of February. So there's been a number of accusations from you know, different governors at different points in time, allegations of forgery, you know, things that might push him as a person of questionable character. Has the NEC, the NWC, made an actual investigation into these allegations against Julius Abui? And can you say for certain that you can, you can guarantee the quality of his character? Well, thank you very much. In the Nigeria context and constitution of the tribe of Nigeria, we were the one that started this issue with the chairman. <clears throat> and the STI court found, you know, merit in our case. Abure was restrained. All these other characters 
decided to go against us. But as law abiding, he prevented the court of appeal. And court of appeal said no. That's the way I'm going. Court of appeal said no. Once court has taken jurisdiction over a matter, we cannot now begin to run to the press and say, oh, all that's judiciary, maybe they did this, they did that. No. Let me shock you. Do you know, despite our relationship with Abure, we have appealed to the Supreme Court over that judgment of the Court of Appeal, which is the normal thing for us to do. But in the case of Olushi, we only saw letter. Since how many months she has been unable to proceed to court to ventilate her anger. But in our own case, every of this character gathering against Abure said Abure is not guilty. And okay. the Court of Appeal agree with them that Abure is not guilty. All right. Uh, so Mr. what has changed? Are you getting my point? Our matter is before the court. And the court has, you know, taken position. That's the Court of Appeal, Abuja and Benin. They have taken position against our own position. All right. So we will leave to the court, you Mr. know, Mr. to Abambi. determine that when the time comes. Uh, unfortunately, we have to go. We've run out of time. But in 30 seconds, there, has been, there have been calls for Peter Obi to leave the Labour Party and start up his own party. Can can the Labour Party survive the exit of Peter Obi? If it happens. We have always survived. No, we have always survived without him. He was the one that failed in Abga, he failed in PDP, and Labour Party gave him life. We do not need OB 2027. In fact, we wish him well back to Abga or PDP or any other party he wanted to form. All Labour right. Party has already been winning the election. We won with even Omar Gege, the former deputy president before he crossed to APC. Great Ogboru are contesting that this party. We All want right. a rep, we want assembly. Mimiko contested even when Obi was a local champion in, right. in, in, in his bank. He was just doing the bank business when we present an election, three months to general right. election. I and guess we won we'll under find out in the next... We'll, we'll, we'll find so out we in really the next few weeks, him. Mr. Rabambi. It's not an asset in the Labour Party. We'll have to find out in the next few weeks, Mr. Rabambi, because right now it does seem that the leadership uh, is, in a, is in a tussle and there's a, a debate as to who the real leader is. But we'll find out in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much for your time with us. We'll see you again. Yeah, thank you very much and good morning. All right. We're going to break now where we'll come back. More conversations. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, last week, the federal government predicted a five-day rainfall that may lead to flooding in 21 states and 123 locations. Seven states were mentioned to be severely affected, including Benue, Kogi, Anambra, Delta, Imo, Rivers, and Biosa states. The Office, the National Flood Early Warning System Center of uh, the Federal Ministry of Environment, warned communities downstream of uh, uh, River Benue to take caution. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, has predicted rainfall and thunderstorms across the country uh, from Monday, September 9th to Wednesday, September 11th. The most recent victim of the severe floods in my, is Maiduguri, Bornu State, which is now struggling with submersion. Our reporter, Omaru Kirawa, joins us live from Boronu State. Good morning, Omaru Kirawa. What's the situation live there in Boronu State regarding the flooding? Uh, yeah. Well, a very good morning. The situation um, is, uh, we're just recounting to memory lane. About 30 years ago, 1994, an uh, incident of flood uh, it took away the, the entire city, displacing families and struggling to survive. And happening in Meduguri now. If you can see, um, these are people who are struggling to find safe place. They have left their homes. They had sleepless nights. Um, the water is here. It's, if you can see, this is um, the state specialist hospital. And uh, we, right now, we are at the post office area, the heartbeat of, uh, of Meduguri, the Borno State capital. And um, from reports we are getting from the people that are coming, um, Areas like Bonge, including the popular Monday market, uh, was taken over by, by the flood, as well as um, other areas, including the, um, uh, the, the zoo, where, where animals are caged, and so on and so forth. And um, from the information I'm getting, even crocodiles uh, have, are, 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 are out in the water. So people are very being cautious with the situation. But, uh, Meanwhile, I have some people who will speak to us uh, with regard to the situation. So the 
Okay, so Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Shehu, me ne ke faruwa a cikin yaya. A cikin sabon da yake faruwa sai dai mu ce inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun. Sai dai Allah mai rawa mutane asarar da suke gaskiya an yi asara bala adad. Musamman ma mutanen da suke zanne a gonge bakin kasuwa gidan Shehu Borno Bala Burin wallahi ruwa ya tada mutane gaba daya. Musamman ma ni ka gani nan wallahi ina gonge ne. Gwanje na ta ruwa ta she ni daga gidana na kawo ni gida na aje kaya na na zo gun wani aboki na ina kwana to gidan da na aje kaya na ma ruwa ya kara shiga cikin yanzu gun aboki na da inke kwana a bakin Ahmadu Ballawe ruwa ya kara shiga cikin gidan ni yanzu na rasa ma inda zai rayuwa ta kaga kullun ka na an na rasa inda zan sa rayuwa ta okay so um what this uh, young man is saying is that he has lost everything that he has he only, he only has um this cloth that he has on his uh on on his uh, on his hand and that almost all the communities nearby to his area has been flooded and the keep the water keep um bushing out and people don't even know where to go to they are heading to um bulunkutu area near the outskirts of meduguri and uh, I have um, another person who will tell us more with regard to the to the experience. So, Baba, yeah, who can speak? Any other Baba, Ma, Abu, Baba, just now. Any other Muhsin, any other Mubajir, any other Ruaye, any other Guru. The Bobi, the Sketch, the other Abu, the Abu, the Nazir, the Shagun, the Yesa, the Kada, the Guru. So, she, the Abu, the Ramu, just for Ruaye, na. The name of the area is the name of the area 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 ne ne fa kuma shi kan ma ba a gani katangan ma shi wallahi dai mu ce inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun dan mutum mai shekara 40 hamsin bai taba gani irin wannan masifa ba wallahi so what this uh, man is saying here is that uh, their major concern is that even the state specialist hospital the water has destroyed um defense and it has started entering into the state specialist hospital and another major worry is that uh, the water has destroyed um, the zoo where animals uh, are there. So their fear is that crocodiles and other animals um, might easily uh, affect people. And uh, uh, I have another um, resident who will tell us more with regard to the experience. Papa, I ask you muna jira sai da government ta kawo taimar ta muko da wuri wuri saboda ba mu san inda zamu kai ba jiragen mu babu kasuwanni mu gaba daya babu ya hallaka da kayan gaba daya muna nema sai da government ta taimar ta sa mana hannu tunda wuri wuri muna cikin wahala sosai kamar ina cikin ruwa da masu magaran gaba daya ba mu san inda zamu kai ba muna roko gashi na gidan shehu ba mu gaba daya ruwa ya cinne balle ma gidan shirki ma haka balle gidan talaka to da wannan muna kone sai da government ta ta sa mana hannu tunda wuri ตัวเราอาจารย์อภิญญาที่ทําเศรษฐกิจที่ทําเศรษฐกิจมุ่งหน้ามาเมื่อไหร่มาเมื่อไหร่เศรษฐกิจมุ่งหน้ามาเศร
uh, course of our bulletin today. Um, stay with us. We, of course, will take a very short break. When we come back this morning, we continue with the conversations this morning on Breakfast Central. Good to have you back. The Minister of Finance, Mr. Wale Adun, has denied reports of a value-added tax VAT rate increase from 7.5% to 10%. In a statement, Adun clarified that the VAT rate remains unchanged at 7.5% as stipulated in the nation's tax laws. Adun emphasized the importance of a balanced tax system built on three key pillars, tax policy, tax laws, and tax administration. He reassured Nigerians that fiscal policies aim to promote sustainable economic growth, alleviate poverty, and support businesses. Now, the former Vice President of Nigeria, Tiko Abubaka, strongly criticized a proposed increase of a value-added tax rate from 7.5% to 10%. He also warned that this move will be a very blazing inferno, a disastrous move, and uh, would further destabilize Nigeria's fragile, or fragile rather, economy. His criticism follows recent disclosures by the chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, Taiwo Oyedele, whose committee has recommended an upward review of the value-added tax from the present 7.5% to 10% by 2025. We're joined this morning by Investment Banking Executive and Public Affairs Analyst, Naimeka Obiari. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, you've seen the recommendations by uh, Mr. Taiwo Uedele and as well as the uh, rebuttal by the uh, Wali Etum. Do, do you think that this is maybe some medicine after that? Do you think that they probably initially we're going to be open to that suggestion i mean we've seen a number of people say no it's because of the public outcry against this is why they're backing backing down to be very honest if nigeria is a working economy if nigeria is an economy that is productive based like mexico like vietnam like south africa like south korea like indonesia and malaysia Paying VAT of 10% is not out of place. I took out time to look at um, VAT rates in different jurisdictions and climes. Why the outcry is so loud is because of the current perilous, current poverty state situation of a majority of Nigerians. Today, over 197 million Nigerians cannot comfortably do three square meals in a day. So I understand the outcry, I understand the political angle to it, the politicians coming out to and that is the truth because as, as at the current state of Nigeria, it will not be advisable to impose any tax rates on Nigerians. But ideally, if Nigeria was to be a very productive nation, productive as we used to have it between 1966, 1966 VAT rate of 10%, it was not out of place. And that is the truth. And again, we also need to look at even the way the VAT returns are distributed. Under a truly republic, federative republic, like we used to have it during the first republic, tax rates, tax, you actually, tax rates should actually be fixed by the federative units. They collect those VAT rates, keep 50% of it, 30% to the center, and then 20% to the federal government. That we just have very few items on the exclusive list. Such competitive um, approach, we make the U.S. federal units to look inward and be more productive. So I understand the reason for the outcry and those even who want to capitalize the opposition to play politics. But the truth is, if we are to be an ideal productive nation, 10% VAT rate will not be out of place. Yeah, and, and, and do you see that we might be moving in maybe baby steps into being that productive nation that you speak of? Um, to be very honest, to make to turn Nigeria into a productive cop is the easiest thing to do. I sometimes I look around me and I muse at the level of insensitivity, at the level of wickedness, at the lack of patriotism and sincerity on the part of the political class across the three tiers and arms of government. Nigeria is one country, or sorry again that can easily produce and export nothing less than $600 billion worth of non-oil and non-oil exports. Netherlands, 22 million people. 
Less than that, 43,000, 41,000 square kilometer landmass, only about 1.9 million hectares of it are able. They export $643 billion worth of commodities. Vietnam, $399 billion. See, personally, and with my team, we've dissected this economy. And I can tell you off the cuff where we can generate these returns and how we can do it easily within the next six months. But the problem we have is that we don't have leaders across the three tiers and arms of government. 99% of them do not care about productivity, do not care about the welfare of the city. All they just see, they see political avenue as avenue to enrich themselves, enrich their cronies, and the, and the, and the, and the, and get away with it. If security can be slain in less than six months, it's very, very simple. And that is at the cross of it. Even corruption is not even the problem. And I tell you the truth. Even in the midst of the corruption, because what the corruption have done in Nigeria is that it has distorted things. If we tackle, for us to tackle corruption, we need to tackle the foundation. And what is the foundation? The physical, the constitutional, and the electoral reforms, urgent reforms to enable those with good minds, with passion, with skills, with knowledge, with patriotism, like Abafemi Awolo, like um, Michael Obara, to be at the helm of affairs. I give you an example. This equity in Nigeria, which is at the root of most of our problems, very easy to solve. In every of the electoral wars, select 100 youths. Let the community select their sons who are qualified, who are not criminals, who are educated, to form what we call agro-rangers. Take them to the military formations, train them optimally, equip them, give them AK-47, AK-49. Provide four armored personnel carriers in every local government that innocent and not can produce it. Give them drones. Then set up agro clusters, 300 to 1,000 hectares, industrial agro clusters. Osarege, we've done these numbers. We have a complete model how this thing can be done. In an integrated way, the federal government partnering with the state and local government. In less than six months, we will destroy insecurity. In less than one year, we will bring into this economy $250 billion agro export after ensuring 99% domestic food sufficiency. You know, right. on our private sector level, we are doing it. But the question is, sometimes I, I, I feel like losing my mind. I don't understand why these things cannot be implemented. Very, very easy. Or sorry again. All right. Oh, well. I mean, if, if I re make reference to what you've just said, you've given suggestions on how we can you know, make the best of the, of the times that we're, we're in. You talked about fighting insecurity. But you also mentioned, it was going to be my next question, to ask if you have faith in the current administration to be able to make this nation a productive nation that can then afford to get to the 10% taxation. But like you said, you did say that, you, I mean, you don't, our leaders are very selfish. If we go back to what Taiwo Yedele said, he said that, you know, our tax rate is abysmally low, our revenue is abysmally low. So with the current reality that we have, is there any way that we can work with what we have to be able to help us get the best, you know, in that regard? See, see let me tell you. You know, there is this um, unfortunate, so much concentration on, on an emphasis at the federal level. In fact, yes, the federal government wins a lot of power and influences. But I actually tell you that where the real power lies, it's with the governors. Forget the fact that they say the president is the commander in chief. If 24, if we have 24 or three state governors who are very sincere, let me tell you, these governors practically control members of the National Assembly that comes from their states. These governors, if they decide today that they want to make life unbearable for Mr. President, do you remember that in the first in the, this fourth republic between 1999 and 2003, I think even as vice president was so powerful because it was so aligned with the governors that the person don't have to beg him. That is how powerful the governors are. And see, paying tax is not an issue. Nigerians can actually pay the right taxes. But you, it's only a man who is productive. It's only a man who has a living economy. It's only a man who has a living income that can be able to pay tax. I say to you, 197 million Nigerians cannot even feed themselves, cannot even meet up their physiological needs of shelter, of clothing, of feeding. South Africa, 
annually they do over 1.6 billion dollars. Taxation contributes about 81 billion dollars. Minimum wage there is 320,000 naira. Nigeria can easily grow an economy that can add over 500 billion dollars annually. We can even easily build a one trillion dollar economy in three years. But we need to put in place those foundations that will make this economy become very productive. And what are those foundations? Even before we go in the medium term of constitutional amendment, if the governors are sincere, we brought up suggestions on how they can mutually tackle insecurity, put their people to productive work, do massive export. I was talking to one of the big airlines that come into Nigeria. They listened to one of some of my, 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 my podcasts. And they said to me, Doctor, we can work together. We can set up uh, storage centers at some of the major airports in Nigeria. So that if we bring in cargoes of goods into Nigeria, rather than go empty, we can take some of the outputs you've been suggested that we produce and export them for you guys. Nigeria can easily be productive. But the problem is the governors need to sit down, work All with right. the federal government of Nigeria to tap into the latent potentials and sectors in Nigeria. The focus sector should be agri and solid mineral. Oil is even nothing. I'm telling you the truth. Oil should actually be our working capital for a country like Nigeria. The good oil we have can only serve as a working capital. We have other sectors like agri, like solid minerals, that can give us time scale what we are getting today from All good right, oil. Mr. Then we just need working governors, partnering with the federal government with good heads. Yeah, all right. Um, I mean, we're two years, you know, almost two years into the new, you know, administration. Um, I, I'm not sure if they maybe are thinking in this same direction, but only time will tell. And another four years is going to be over. And then, of course, you know, we'll be, you know, asking what we've achieved in the last four years with, you know, making Nigeria more productive. But thank you very much for your ideas. I think, you know, if one person is listening every now and then, they might pick one, one or two things from it. Thanks for stopping by. And we look forward to uh, speaking with you again, as always. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Um, I mean, the conversations continue this morning on Breakfast Central. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, we, of course, you know, we're getting into our newspaper uh, review this morning. And now let's review the papers this morning. We're looking at what the front pages are saying. I will be joined by the publisher of the Niche newspaper, Iketchukwu Amiti, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Olive. And we never be. He is an autocrat to the core. In his DNA runs autocracy. So let nobody make any mistake about it because now somebody is a civilian and is now elected, in quote, president. He is a Democrat. No, that's not the definition of who a Democrat is. What President Bola Tinubu is doing is simply to cow, intimidate, and make sure that NLC president does not become a rallying ground for those who can speak true to power. The, 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 Joe, you know, and what is rather annoying is how flippantly this government is throwing up the issue of treason, treasonable felony, terrorism, and financing. These are ordinarily very weighty allegations. And you don't throw bandy these uh, uh, charges so whimsically as to make mockery of the government itself. Look, perhaps they don't realize it. They are mocking themselves and not the people and not yeah. Joe Ajayu. Because by the time you continue doing this, you make people begin to have sympathy for even the Joe Ajayu you are trying to demonize. Joe Ajayu was not in any flight this thing. He wrote them officially to say, I am going for an assignment. It was an international labor congress function in the UK. They know the address where he was going to. Yeah. 
And then he stopped him at the airport, arrested him. For what? Now it is the DSS. The police are still doing their own. Didn't the, police, didn't the DSS find out from police what they were able to find out when they invited Joao Jero the last time? Yeah. And look, it is, All right. it is so childish. It is so childish. You ought to finish your investigation before inviting well, we people. Arrest, All right. Yes. Let's take this call from Maria calling from Kaduna. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Please go ahead. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead with your comment. Yeah, about the arrest of Joe Ajero. You see, it is rather unfortunate. We are all students of history. And we knew what happened during the time of Ibrahim Babangida during SAP. Were they able to sustain it? You see, you cannot arrest Joe Ajero. Joe Ajero is an individual. He is speaking on behalf of the labor. Is this a, I'll ask a pertinent question this morning. Is this a distraction or what? What Jay Ajero is saying, you see, Bola Tinubu is one of those people I was thinking that, like, like, your, like your analyst rightly said a while ago, Bola Tinubu, I thought he was a Democrat. But from all indications and from all signposts, it looks as if Bola Tinubu has derailed, totally derailed from what we call democracy. You see, protest is an integral part of democracy. And is this a crime for Jero, a Jero to now say, okay, if people will go on protest, no problem. They can go on protest. If, if he's agitating for increment in, in salary of, of, of workers, is it also a crime? Bonatis Dubu should stand upright and, and listen to the voice of the people. They say their sovereignty belongs to the people. When the people are saying that the increment of fuel is not sustainable, he should reverse it and the floating of the Naira. Up to now, Bola Tinubu is, is not listening to the voice of reasoning. Right. He should listen to the voice of reasoning and know the pain that Nigerians are going through. We have never had it so bad like this from, from the previous government. And this government, the way he's going, I don't think that Bola Tinubu can sustain it. Let Thank him just leave the Jero Ajero. Is he afraid of the conference that is Jero Ajero is going for? God bless our country, Nigeria. Thank you. All right. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, come, I'm come to think of it. Also yesterday, the same DSS raided the offices of Sarah, Sarah yes. in Abuja, looking for their directors. Again, the same charge of terrorism financing. Treason. You know, I think the government is just being childish. It's just being childish. And what they are doing is not sustainable. They can't, they can't get away with this. They may have all the instruments of coercion. Yes. But the fact of the matter is that when the people are pushed to the wall, they fight back. And Nigerians are duty bound to fight back. And Nigerians also have a right. You know, this, this nonsense of saying a, a democratically elected government and the only time we can change it, wait till 2027, it is not true. A government can be changed, can be removed. In the Constitution, we have the right of impeachment. A democratically elected government, so-called, can also be removed. Yeah, but they always interpret it as, you know, and as a plot pl to overthrow, to overthrow the government, the government and, and all of that. I said that is rather childish. The people have the right, through members of the National Assembly, to impeach the president. That is not treason. That is not overthrowing the government. It is constitutional. One of the ways of removing a president or a governor is through impeachment. It is constitutional. It is not... It's not Anything new, it is not unconstitutional, it is not illegal to remove a president even before the term, his term expires. So expires. for you to continue ranting that it is, it is a, a, a treason does not make sense. Unless treason has a different definition from what it ought to be. It is democratically right to impeach a president if the need be 
And President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has committed the treasonable impeach uh, 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 offenses that could be uh, that are impeachable. Yeah. Impeachable offenses. I'm sorry if I use uh, uh, treasonable. No, impeachable offenses. You can't spend extra budget freely and expect that the people should not ask questions. The money he used in buying the new old presidential jet. jet. Presidential jet. Where did it come from? Right. Was it appropriated? Is it not an impeachable offense? All right. Let's there are so many things that are going wrong that the people, if we were to be in a democracy, that people have the right to wow. say what is going on. And to ask what is going on is not a reasonable offense. All right. Our last call this morning. Kalechi, good morning. Do we have Kalechi here? All right. It doesn't seem like Kelechi right. is here. Let I want us to quickly talk on the big the story on the front page of this Nigeria. Bandits abduct patients, nurses in Kaduna Hospital. I think it's a very sad story that we need to talk about. And I'm highlighting this because uh, I think some time ago, two weeks thereabout, we had a guest on the show who shared with us that he thinks that the attack on the medical personnel is targeted because one, some of the doctors who had been released from captivity had shared that whilst they were being held by the captors. They had heard that you know that they were they needed them they used them to be able to take care of those in captivity the terrorists as well as the bandits. But before you respond to that, let's hear from uh, Kelechi who's calling from Delta. Good morning, Kelechi. Please go ahead. Good morning, madam. Good morning. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, my own contribution this morning. I I just turned on the television and I heard the program. Please, Nigerians, um, the youth especially, we need to be. We need to be politically conscious. I just find that the, uh, most of the Nigerian youth, we are so distracted. A lot of things are distracting Nigerians. We need to, we need more of these programs to be put out in many media. Let Nigerians be aware of what is going on. I believe that everyone is angry, but they don't know the platform to which they can play or, or voice out. So if this, these uh, programs can be can be can be put out in the air, in the radio, in the in the street, uh, the marketplaces and uh, the churches, and you know where where most of these youth gather in the playstations where they play all these games, where football matches are played, they will be aware of all these things. And believe me, if they are very conscious of what is happening, if they are aware, the changes will start from there all because. Right, Thank you very much. For, and thank, for, you for, okay. thank you for helping us spread the word. We hope that you help us spread the word from here. And just to mention, we're on DSTV. We're also on live streaming on X, on Facebook, on Instagram as and well. So please, and on YouTube as well. So please help us share the word. So I'd like you to respond to the kidnap by bandits in Kaduna. And also, there's a story. You just mentioned the gunman killed an Anambra businessman after 10 million naira ransom uh, on the punch as well. I think it's also a similar story. Like you said, it is, it is a very sad development. Uh, honestly, also, I, I feel, I wish every day that I could uh, wake up and go through the newspapers, the pages of Nigerian newspapers, and not find one single story of kidnap, of murder, of... But you find that it is not possible, because that has become the other of the day. Look, what you said about, because the bandits or whoever they are, are always a step ahead of, of the Nigerian uh, system. Yeah. This issue of ransom that is now being paid in millions, if not billions, they use it to get more arms so that they are better equipped to continue perpetrating their evil acts. Yeah. And now they also know that it is, they go out there, they kidnap women and to use them to service the men who are 
in the forest. Now they are going for doctors, they are going for nurses to also use them to treat some of their men that were injured or those that are sick and may not easily have access to conventional uh, hospitals. So they know what they are doing. And to imagine that in a country where the bandit leader in, uh, is it Zamfara? Uh, Toji. Toji, yeah. Toji yes. is there issuing threats, and the DSS is busy arresting Joao Jero, is busy raiding the offices of, 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 uh, of uh, Sarah in Abuja. Is it not funny? Is it, is it possible that the DSS or the Nigerian security agencies can say that they do not know who or where Belutoji is? And this is because people who live in Zamfara, according to reports, they know, you know, they, they hear from him often, they know who he is. You know, that he is the same comes way. his ransom every now and then. That is the same way the police will claim that they do not know where the former governor of Kogi State is. Oh, yeah. And they are looking for him all over the country. For how many months now? They don't know where he is. But they know where Joa Jero is. Look, these guys are simply being ridiculous. This is sheer irresponsibility. And this is not the way to govern a country. They are making mockery of, of governors. Why did we do NIM? Why did we collect uh, that do all the do all the things that they said we should do when these bandits and kidnappers freely use their cell phones to negotiate for ransom and you say you don't know where they are? Well, they, we're hearing that the reports by the NCC that the NCC has started to has now activated the tracking of these phones. Oh, it, it's just activating the tracking of these phones. What have they been doing all these years? And don't forget this same Belo Toji was given a chieftaincy title or whatever, or when he was given a chieftaincy title, when Metawale, the Minister of State for Defense, was governor of the same Zamfara, the state government sent a delegation. Who is fooling who? Who is fooling who for crying out Loud. The people know where these people are. Um, uh, what is his name? The, the Muslim uh, cleric, Sheikh, uh, uh, what is his name again? Um, Guma. Gumi. Gumi. Gumi Sheikh Gumi knows where to meet with them and negotiate with them in the forest. And these guys will be there. And, and the government does not know where they are. The security agencies do not know where they are, but they know where the labor leaders are. They know where those who are planning treason to overthrow the government are. But they don't know where people who are wrecking, making Nigeria a Hobbesian state, where life is short, brutish, and nasty. These guys are jokers. Maybe because that's not treason according to them. I, well, I, just, just, I, I did share this yesterday, and I think it's so, so important that I share this, um, by Bula Mabukati, he's you know popular investigative journalist. He had um, shared you know, stories where he said the people of Morikitano of Zamfara State have managed to convince Be Belutoji to reduce the ransom he imposed on them from 50 million naira to 30 million naira with a Wednesday deadline for payment. The sum is supposedly compensation for the killing of Turgis cows by the new commandant of the army base stationed inside Muriki. Each family head is required to contribute 10,000 naira, while unmarried adults must pay 2,000 naira. He said despite the commandant's advice not to pay and his promise to never harm Turgis animals again, <laughs> the commandant, um, people, or the people rather, remain doubtful. I'm, I'm just, you know, sharing this. I'm, of course, it's for, for, once again from uh, Bulama Bukati. You know, it, it's not completely verified, but... You know, he's an investigative journalist in northern Nigeria. And for, it, it just an, for me, it's just um, a way to show how bad the situation is with security situation in, in those places. And the authority 
that people like Melo Terji supposedly have in Zamfara? APC, the All Progressive Congress has reduced Nigeria to a huge joke since 2015. Yeah, apologies, please just hold on. Um, let's, Timothy, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Timothy. Please go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead. Good morning. All right, Timothy, you might need to turn on the volume of your TV set and call us back so that uh, we can have yeah, a final Good morning. Conversation. Please, um, are you hearing me? Loud and clear. Are you hearing me? All right, please, we might have to disconnect Timothy and hope that you can call back. So if you can quickly wrap up your thoughts yeah. process. All I'm saying is that this country has become a good joke on the APC in the last nine or something years. And nobody, and nobody, even in the widest imagination, could have imagined that a country could be brought down on its knees as APC has done. And don't forget, President Tinubu told Nigerians that he was going to continue from where Muhammad Buhari stopped. What Nigerians did not envisage was that this guy was going to throw Nigerians beneath what anybody could ever imagine. President Bola Tinubu is in the, uh, 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 a hole, as it were. And what is he doing? He's still digging every day, every day. What you said the investigative uh, uh, journalist said, verified, maybe not fully, but that's the story that we get every day yeah. in, this, in this country. And that we are in a country where terrorists have the audacity to levy Look, there are so many places. All these people living in IDB camps. I've said that here before. People are occupying their ancestral homes. Yeah. Who are those people? And how is it that a government so-called cannot flush out these people and take back Nigerians, Nigeria, bona fide Nigerians to their homes? Yeah. And we are claiming that we are a sovereign country, we are this, we are that. No, that's not the definition of yeah. sovereignty. And every, I mean, four years is going to pass, you see how people live in IDP camps, and the governor will, you know, <laughs> leave his whole, his whole tenure for four years and still have people in IDP camps. And they're not ashamed, of, you're not even ashamed of yourself. They'll come and let you, I mean, the next administration will build up. And, the, and people, the look, there are so many parts of Northwest, there are so many states in the Northwest, where for you to go to farm, you pay levy to bandits. Bandits collect money from all these people. There are so many ungoverned spaces in Nigeria where the authority of the government, yep. they will simply tell you, don't, don't go there. And we are gallivanting all over the world, claiming that we are a sovereign state, claiming that we are doing right, and all you do is to harass, to hound labor leaders, those who come out to protest, you charge them with treason. When did peaceful protest become a treasonable offense? For oh. crying out loud. Unfortunately, this is, this is where we are. Ikechi Kwamichi, thank you very much as always for your time and for your thoughts on these uh, stories uh, making headlines across Nigeria. We look forward to seeing you again. You know, they have, or they are dealing with labor. They are not dealing with civil society groups. Also, don't be surprised. You wake up this uh, tomorrow morning and they will lock up here again. They will come for the journalists. They will come for everybody. And that was why about two or three weeks ago, I said here what Martin Nimola, the Lutheran priest in Germany said, they came for the Jews, I did not talk. Not complain, they yeah. came for the socialists, I did not complain. They yeah. came for this, they came for that. By the time they came for me, there was nobody to stand for me. Nigerians must push back. It is, it is in our collective interest not to allow President Bola Metinubu to yeah. get to where he's going. All because right. if he gets to where he's going, this country will be doomed. All right, thank you very much uh, once again.
and uh, we'll see how, I mean, everybody knows the role that they have to play. Thank you for your time once again. Always my pleasure. Thank All you. Right. Stay with us this morning. We've heard what Ike Chukwamechi has had to say. Well, let's tell you what Nigerians have to say. But before that, the crisis in the Labour Party has worsened as the party's leadership announced that presidential ticket is no longer going to be given to Peter Obi or Alex Oti. And of course, this has been some of the biggest conversations that we've had in the last 24 hours after the uh, 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 meeting held by Julius Aburi and of course the address of uh, uh, the press. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more of these conversations and then also share with you what Nigerians are saying. Welcome back to Breakfast Central. Now let's inform you that the Department of State Services has granted administrative bill to the Nigerian Labour Congress President, Joe Ajayro. The embattled NLC President Ajayro was arrested in the early hours of Monday morning at the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja while on his way to the United Kingdom for an official engagement. Yesterday, civil society groups, activists and prominent individuals denounced Ajayro's arrest and demanded his immediate release with an ultimatum before midnight. Also, officers from the Department of State Services took control of the Abuja Office of the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, uh, described the, of course, the body SERAP described the action as unlawful occupation um, of their office. And of course, you know, these are the latest developments in the last 24 hours. Nigerians, of course, have also reacted to the um, Serap story and, of course, uh, the uh, storming of the Serap office by the DSS officers and, of course, the release of Joe Ajero. But let's also, you know, of course, continue to expand on these conversations. We'll now be sharing with you what Nigerians are saying on major national issues. Comes up right next. <music> In an interesting turn of events, the Labour Party has held another National Executive Committee meeting led by Julius Aburi, the embattled national chairman or the former chairman of the Labour Party, whichever you so please. This NEC meeting held on the 9th of September, five days after the stakeholders meeting convened by Governor Alex Oti and attended by His Excellency Peter Obi, as well as major stakeholders in the Labour Party. Recall that on the 4th of September, the stakeholders meeting held in Umahia set up a 29-member committee led by Senator Nenadi Usman to oversee the affairs of the party for the next 180 days. This move was hinged on the expiration of the tenure of Julius Aburi as national chairman of the party, a move he has critiqued, calling the meeting illegal, stating that Governor Alex Oti had no constitutional right to call for the stakeholders' meeting and holding on to his position as the national chairman. Julius Aburi then held the NEC meeting and a number of resolutions were reached at this meeting. One, it condemned the conveners of the stakeholders' meeting and disassociated itself from all the deliberations reached at the stakeholders' meeting. Two, it reimposed confidence in Julius Aburi as the party's national chairman. Three, it approved the review of some disciplinary actions taken against some members in the spirit of reconciliation. Now, there were several other resolutions reached, but the one resolution that has garnered the most reaction is the review of the decision of the National Convention to reserve its presidential and governorship tickets for Peter Gregory Ruby and Alex Oti, respectively. So consequently, all tickets of the party from the presidency to the House of Assemblies, they are all open to all qualified Nigerians. And they have, of course, backed this by the Constitution. Fans and fools of the Labour Party have shared their thoughts while some have drummed their support for Peter Obi. There are others who have expressed their support for Julius Aburi. At this point, let the real Labour Party national chairman please stand up. So now let's take tweets from social media. Our first tweet is from Dr. Bankole, who has also shared his thoughts regarding this. He says, it's a shame that Aburi and his courts have such a poverty mindset. Instead of building on the tremendous growth brought to the party by Peter Obi and Alex Oti and the obedient movement, they are fighting the wave that made them suddenly relevant. There are too many self saboteurs in this party. I will be glad if Peter Obi and the obedience move elsewhere, just not PDAPC or any party with a poverty mindset as the Labour Party. And, you know, there have been several other calls like this asking for Peter Obi and the obedience to go form a new party. This one says, Dear Abu Ray, you are making a very big mistake that will likely stand against you soon. May I remind you, in case you have forgotten, that Labour Party is this solid 
because of two entities which are directly proportional to one another, which are the obedient and obi thread with caution. Toby Akimbo has another thought. He says, I was thinking they said Labour Party now has a new chairman, apart from Abure. Is Abure still their chairman? Abure Camp, they threaten to sue Alex Oti Camp. Alex Oti Camp, they organize. Multiple camps all accusing one another. Cross took the next tweet, and Cross uh, also had to talk about this. And he said, uh, can we please put up Cross's tweet? All right, uh, we have a tweet from Cross. Okay, Toby Akimbo says, Labour Party will become a shadow of itself by the time Peter Obi and the HOR Senate members, including Governor Alex Oti, move out of Labour Party. Continue messing up. I think the final tweet I'll take will be from Morris Money. I thought it was a really funny tweet and a great way to wrap up this episode. It says, Abure to our papa, twin, where have you been? <laughs> it's quite the drama that's going on with the Labour Party. Uh, like we say, it's seeming like a party that's divided within itself. I'm hoping that the Labour Party can put its act together and maybe be ready for the next elections. But that's all we have for you. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back again same time tomorrow. Remember to tune in and also join us on social media via all platforms. I am Olive M.O.D. And I am Osaogi Ogbawam. Wish you a very productive Tuesday morning ahead. Um, and of course, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.